The history of America is not just written in words on paper. It is also written in brick, iron, and wood. It is written in buildings and in neighborhoods. These irreplaceable treasures are gateways to America's sense of self and its sense of purpose. They remind us of where we've been and what we have shared along the way. These insightful thoughts from the National Trust for Historic Preservation describe so well the treasure we call German Village. Hello everyone, my name is Kristen Hartman and I am delighted you've chosen to visit my neighborhood. 233 acres of historic homes and businesses built with sweat, pride and determination and lovingly restored by a group of visionary property owners over the last half century. The roots of this vibrant community extend back to 1814 when the property was added to the boundaries of the city of Columbus, the brand new capital of the new state of Ohio. Just a few years later and almost half a world away, war, famine and economic hardship began forcing thousands of Germans to seek a better life abroad. Many of them set their sights on the newly settled areas of the American Midwest. The new city of Columbus proved to be a popular destination. But it was a difficult trip, six weeks across the Atlantic in cramped conditions, followed by slow canal boats or dangerous overland routes plagued by thieves and swindlers. Still, they came in such numbers that by 1865, one-third of Columbus's population was German. The South End, as it would be known, seemed to spring up overnight. Using local materials, the first immigrants built sturdy one-and-a-half-story brick cottages with limestone foundations and slate roofs, two rooms with wood-burning fireplaces on the first floor, and a small second floor where everyone slept. As settlers found jobs and built small businesses, the newfound prosperity allowed them and those who followed to build the larger two-story Italianates and Queen Anne homes you'll find throughout the neighborhood. Much of this prosperity resulted from the growing brewery business just a few blocks west along the Scioto River. By the late 19th century, four large brewing companies here were owned and operated by German businessmen. But these enterprising immigrants built more than just houses and businesses. The South End boasted German-language schools and churches, social clubs like the Menorcore Singing Society, even German-language newspapers. A favorite gathering place was a new 23-acre park. Established in 1867, City Park, now known as Schiller Park after the German playwright and poet Friedrich von Schiller, hosted weekend picnics and concerts. It proved so popular that the Ohio State Fair was held here twice in the 1860s. And in 1891, German-born residents raised money to erect the landmark Schiller statue here in honor of their German heritage. Just a few blocks away, Recreation Park was opened in 1887 with a 5,000 seat grandstand and bleachers for an additional 1,500 fans. It was the site of some of the nation's first professional baseball games. And the Ohio State Buckeyes team played their first home football game on the field on November 1st, 1890. By the way, the mighty Buckeyes were defeated by Wooster College, 64 to nothing. But the South End's fortunes began to wane, and by the 1870s, immigration from Germany was slowing. Children of previous immigrants were marrying into established American families. English reading and writing was becoming standard in public schools. And then in 1914, World War I broke out. Suddenly, it wasn't popular or comfortable to be German. In 1918, German language books were burned in bonfires on Broad Street and in Schiller Park. German street names were changed throughout the village. For instance, Germania became Stuart and Kaiser became Lear. Clubs and newspapers folded, and shortly thereafter, prohibition put German brewery workers on the unemployment line. The period from 1920 to 1960 is remembered as one of urban decline in the Old South End. New zoning laws allowed for increased manufacturing and commercial use of property, further damaging the area's residential character. Though prohibition was repealed, the brewery business never fully recovered, and the Great Depression of the 1930s served to fuel the exodus even more. During the 40s, streetcar tracks and wrought iron fences were claimed as scrap metal for the war effort. In the 50s, as a wave of urban renewal swept the country, short-sighted planners leveled the entire northern third of the neighborhood. 
and when construction of a new interstate highway began, the remaining portion of the German neighborhood was all but cut off from downtown Columbus. Though a few of the original German families held on, absentee landlords assumed control of much of the neighborhood, and it seemed only a matter of time before the 1,600 remaining buildings would be gone too. During that time period, however, one small act occurred that would have tremendous impact on the South End. In 1959, city employee Frank Fetch bought this small German-built brick cottage just west of South High Street. Fetch embodied the spirit of neighborhood activism and renewal. He was convinced these old houses were worth keeping and restoring. Soon, he was leading a small group of determined citizens in proving that the neighborhood could be and should be saved. In 1960, these neighborhood preservation pioneers formed the nonprofit German Village Society. Members worked tirelessly in persuading city government to designate the area a protected historic preservation district. Three years later, they claimed victory. The Columbus City Council established the boundaries of the city's first historic district and created the German Village Commission to control alterations to building exteriors. In the early 70s, preservation efforts led to zoning changes that once again favored the area's residential character. In 1974, the entire village, all 233 acres, was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Housing purchases and restorations increased every year, and property values rose. By the 1980s, German Village was one of the most desirable places in central Ohio to live. A $1 million fundraising campaign in 1990 led to the purchase and restoration of the German Village Meeting House, along with dozens of improvements to Schiller Park, including an amphitheater where Shakespeare is performed each summer, a new playground, improved lake, and the restoration of the 100-year-old Schiller statue. In addition, public and private donations have provided for street lamps in and around the park, benches and waste receptacles, perennial gardens, and the Umbrella Girl statue. Today, the German Village Society is more than a thousand members strong. Guided by an elected board of trustees, they work to preserve and beautify our neighborhood and to educate young and old on the importance of historic preservation. Our German Village community is recognized for its strong volunteer force. In fact, volunteers staff the visitor center, lead neighborhood tours, produce special events, and rally for cleanup and preservation efforts. They maintain the gardens in Schiller Park and in the more recently established Frank Fetch Park on Beck Street. And for their efforts, German villagers have been recognized far and wide for this historic preservation success story. The White House has honored the neighborhood as a Preserve America community. The American Planning Association named it one of the country's 10 great neighborhoods. We're one of the New York Times' top real estate markets for pedestrian-friendly urban neighborhoods, and we've been featured in countless newspaper, magazine, and TV stories. In many respects, German Village looks much as it did 100 years ago, with commercial properties tucked in among the tightly spaced houses. Some of the most celebrated restaurants in central Ohio are right here, along with one of the largest independent bookstores in the country and dozens of shops and galleries offering gifts and works of art you aren't likely to find anywhere else. On the last Sunday of every June, just as it has done since 1960, German Village shows off its accomplishments during the society-sponsored House and Garden Tour. Thousands of guests view selected homes, enjoy dinner parties hosted by residents, and join in the celebration of this urban success story. Today, the German Village Society is proud to serve as caretakers of a legacy dedicated to retaining the character and distinction of the past while creating a thriving contemporary community. I'm Kristen Hartman. Thank you for watching and thank you for visiting German Village. Hope you enjoyed your stay and hope you'll come again soon, perhaps for the next house and garden tour.